How do you prepare differently for a small little local lake tournament than you do for an elite series? Because you have been on the grind since we got home. You know, for me, I just like to fish. You know, I fish as many tournaments as I can. Luckily, I'm in an area where, you know, the people welcome it. Like, they want me to, you know, come fish the tournaments. You know, it's not like they don't want me there and they would rather me not show up. They seem to really like want, like me fishing around them, you know. So, I mean, that's really cool. I'm really thankful for that. You know, they're, I've heard other people say as soon as they, you know, became pros that they're not allowed on any of their small little local lake tournaments anymore and I, i'm lucky you know i grew up fishing around here since i was 12 13 14 15 years old i've been fishing some of these same tournaments my entire life so i kind of grew up with some of these guys you know so i feel like for me i just like to fish as many tournaments as i can and the way that i prepare for tournaments on lakes around the house i fish a lot you know so i'm out here on these lakes that we there might be a tournament on it tomorrow evening or something well i don't really practice for those tournaments you know like if i'm out here and i get a bite i usually catch them you know like it's not like i shake them off you know like if i do see one on bed the day before a tournament i usually catch it you know so it's like i don't really do that i could come out here and and try to practice for the tournaments but i i just don't you know if i'm practicing for an elite event i don't set the hook that often i only set the hook whenever i'm in an area that i don't think i'm going to come to unless i know there's good quality there so then i'll I'll catch a couple out of an area. If I know that it's a spot that's, just say I, get, I got a spot that's close to takeoff, or it's in an area that I already know I'm going to fish, then I get a bite, I almost always shake that bite off. But if I'm, you know, just out here fun fishing, I catch them all. I catch as many as I can. And then I come back and might fish tournament tomorrow night, and then I, I can't even go back to that area because I know that I caught all of them that were probably upstaging or whatever. So I, I run different water. So I don't prepare at all for the smaller local lake tournaments really i um pretty much probably shoot myself in the foot more often than not but that's how it goes i just like to fish i like to catch them i like getting a bite i like setting the hook i like fighting the fish i like everything about it so when i get a bite i set the hook on them. you know that's just how how i've how i do it you said in your last video you weren't gonna catch anymore and then you picked up a frog and literally set the hook the next cast yeah and i was like i just said i wasn't gonna do that yeah that was a that was a problem i you know sometimes it's hard to shake them off but i do i do try to shake off the bigger ones now even in practice if i see one like on, on seminole i had this one stretch where i was on a swim jig i saw a three pounder eat it didn't set the hook then i saw a 13 inch eat it well i caught him and then i saw another big one eat it so i shook him off so you know i i could i saw how big they were so i caught them and then there was one though that that frog bite you talking about the one seminole the big one i saw that fish waking and i definitely should not have caught it but it was like three days before the tournament and it was just out here waking i don't know if it was eating shad or it was spawning or what and i threw that frog in it like four times and the fish came up on it and i saw him come up on it so i threw in there again he came up on it again but he didn't bite it then like the fourth cast he bit it and i caught it and i wish i wouldn't have because maybe i would have caught him but another boat ended up starting in that area maybe he would have caught it. i don't know but either way um I need to shake them off a little bit so, more diligently. Honestly, what percentage of fish do you think you shake off are actually going to be there once you go back? I caught, I think, two on day one of Seminole that I shook off in practice. Two on day one of Seminole that, that I shook off in practice that I caught in the tournament on day one. You think they stay right there? They don't move? One of them moved about three feet, and the other one was in the exact same cast. But that's crazy to me because, do you remember that video we watched the other day where that guy was tracking the bass? Yeah. Those fish were moving. Some of them do. They were pretty like, But it depends mobile. on the time of the year. Th those fish are staging, trying to spawn. Like they've picked somewhere that they're going to sit until it's time for them to go on bed. You know, and then another wave will pull up and then some more fish will pull up to those same areas and stage until they're trying to go on bed. So, yeah, if we track those fish in May, they probably do. They probably swim all over the place a lot more. Not all of them do. One fish stayed on the same dock for a long time, and they caught it twice on the same dock on that on that tracking survey. So, I don't think all the fish that I shake off are going to bite. In fact, way probably over seventy or eighty percent of the ones I've shaken off in practice, I do not catch in the tournament. But if you shake off every bite, 
and catch 10% of them, it's worth it. You know, because you, you might catch a different one, or you might catch one 20 or 30 feet away from it that you did, you know, like I shook them off over here, but I caught one over here, and you don't know if it's the same fish or not. It may be, it may not be. But I just feel like um, the more fish you leave in the area that you're gonna fish in the tournament, the better. It, would, it also helps like if all the other elites are shaking them off too. Yeah, and we have, we have tournaments where, we have certain tournaments where I feel like they don't shake any off, and we have some tournaments where I feel like they shake a bunch off. And it's definitely around the spawn. If they're spawning a lot, I feel like people shake them off more. If they're not spawning, I feel like people don't. But I can think back to them. That should be the opposite, though, because pretty much if they're on bed, they'll probably be there. Like, I mean, in Texas, you caught the same fish three days in a row. It just depends. If, if the female has laid eggs in the bed and the male's guarding those eggs, you could catch that fish multiple times. You know, every day until, until those eggs hatch, three or four times a day sometimes. If there's no eggs in the bed and you catch them, sometimes they'll leave. Sometimes they won't. <coughs> Bless you. Thank you. What about like up north, the smallmouth? If you if you're looking for a big school and you need to know how big they are, do you need to catch more of those? If I like last year on St. Lawrence, I found I don't know five or six schools that had at least 50 fish in them, and I sat on those schools and called them and called them and called them and called them. You know, and I never I caught a three pounder out of one school. I caught a three pounder out of another school, but that's with me catching just pound and a half or pound and a quarter, two pounder, pound and a half or pound and a half or pound and a half or then you catch three. And you know, in that tournament, you only want to weigh in a three, you know? So I did stay on those. You got a mosquito on you, huh? A mosquito. Right here, on this side. I think you got him. Well, in, in those tournaments, you know, it just depends on the quality that you have to catch. So. I try to shake them off a lot if I know they're big ones. If I don't, you know, I'm going to sit there and see what kind of potential it has. But I had some huge schools of bass in that last terminal, St. Lawrence. But I, did, I didn't think I could catch 15 pounds out of them schools. You know, like, it, I thought I could catch 13 pounds out of them schools. And that, that's with me catching two three-pounders. If I did catch two three-pounders or even three three-pounders, you know, and then if I catch two two-and-a-halves, I've still only got 14 pounds. You know, and that, those, were, those would be five big ones for the schools that I found. So, you know, as far as the, the big giant schools, now the, I found some schools that had big ones in them, but they weren't those 50 or 60 fish schools. So, you know, it just kind of depends. You got to kind of play it by ear and just see, see exactly kind of how you're feeling for the turn, what kind of weight it's going to take. You know, like you don't want to go shake off a bunch of two pound males and then think that you, you know, I, I got 20 bites today flipping. But if they're, if they're all pound and a half to two and a half pound males and you're on a lake where it's going to take 17 a day to get paid, you know, you don't want to just shake off 20 bites then go back to them and they're spawning and you catch them all and now you got 12 pounds you know so and it's going to take 17 a day to get paid so you know you kind of got to feel what kind of quality you've got how you're feeling about it you know kind of what it's going to take if you're in a good area of the lake you know that that's just kind of it, it all kind of varies so advice for people that don't really feel like they know how to practice and they're practicing on a lake that they know well would you say that they should do things that they're not used to doing on that lake when they go and practice because they pretty much can fall back on what they're used to doing? I don't think so. Um, usually, I do some risky stuff in practice, more than I probably should. And I don't like to do that until I feel like I have something I can fall back on. So like if I go first day of practice, first half of the day in practice, I feel like I got a decent pattern where I feel like fish are gonna be coming to me, not leaving. Then I'll try to go do some weird stuff or maybe half a day the second day of practice whatever and try to you know try to find where a big school of fish are coming but it seems like to me you're just better off if you fish your strengths you run around and you do what you want to do on the lakes you go to I mean, everywhere you go you can do something that you're comfortable doing you know and even if it's even if you don't think it's the winning deal you're oftentimes gonna have a better tournament doing things that you're you really understand you know what about if you have a tournament on this lake and you've watched videos from that lake and you see them doing something completely different than what you're used to doing? Do you think they should go and try that at least? I don't like to pull up in practice, under official practice, and do something completely foreign to me. To me, I feel like you're going to waste time. You don't really understand. Like, like if, you're, if you're doing a pattern that you don't really understand what makes the fish trigger, what makes the fish bite. Or why you're even doing it. Or, or, or exactly why you're doing it, exactly. A lot of times you waste time because you don't make adjustments quickly enough when you don't have the, the the great understanding of what's going on. So, you know, like, just say you're an extremely good ledge fisherman and there's like 
you get like not that many bites on ledges okay in, in this specific tournament but you're not that good of a shallow water flipper or whatever well if you think the tournament's going to be one flipping shallow a lot of times if you go up there and you hadn't had a bite in an hour you don't understand that you should have already made two or three small adjustments you know because if, you, if it's not something that you're extremely comfortable doing and don't really understand you're not going to make those adjustments quickly enough like if you're out there ledge fishing and you've you know and you're super good at it and you've you know fished for 15 or 20 minutes without a bite you're going to start thinking okay i need to do something to trigger these fish well if you're up there kind of just going through the motion shallow and you don't really understand it you don't understand how quickly you should be making adjustments so a lot of times you end up wasting a lot of time you know like i did that at first ledge fishing i'd get on an area and i'd see fish and i would throw baits through them and rotate baits through them and i couldn't really figure out how to, how to trigger those fish sometimes sometimes i could sometimes i couldn't and it's like i just don't make the adjustments quite as quickly doing things that i don't really understand i'm not as comfortable doing as some other people will so if they're making adjustments better than you are they're going to beat you more times than not and whenever you're doing things that you understand you can make those adjustments extremely quickly and stay around the fish stay on top of the fish and everywhere they move so for me i feel like when you understand what you're doing you just have better tournaments and usually the videos are edited so you don't know what adjustments those people have yeah you don't know all you see is the hook sets and the reeling and the culling you know you don't understand exactly what all they went through how many bites they got today like they might have went three or four hours without a bite and then busted them for like 15 minutes and i've done that fishing shallow whatever you know i might start off and get a flurry in the morning where i catch like three or four big ones like or three or four good ones like quick then i don't get a bite for three hours then all of a sudden bam i catch three more big ones and it's like oh he's dialed in you know he had 19 and a half pounds and it's like not really you know i caught seven bass all day it's just you know they happen to be good ones you know so it it looks good it looks like somebody's catching them but for the most part if you don't really understand what you're doing you're not going to be able to consistently make the adjustments you need to well what if you go to a lake and you know how it's going to be one mm -hmm. say lawrence you know it's going to be pretty much one on a school of smallmouth somewhere. Mm -hmm. and you're fishing an open and you're trying really hard to make the elites you've already done good on the southern swing what are you going to do are you going to try that you have to try it you have to try it if you go to a lake like like now just you like, just contradicted yourself well that that's different because that's a lake where everybody's going to do well doing one thing you know so it's like you you can salvage a tournament though but like if you, if you need to go into a tournament like st lawrence river and you need to top 10 to qualify for the elites or whatever and you are not a very good smallmouth fisherman you still have to fish for smallmouth like you, you like you, you're gonna have to because you can go fish for largemouth to catch you 17 or 18 pounds a day and you're gonna come in 35th or 40th you know like in our last tournament it took over 20 a day to make the top 50 so it, as far as that goes in my opinion you have to fish for smallmouth but i was talking about more along the lines of you're on the lake like in the south where there's multiple ways to get a bite yeah. you should always fish your strengths because yeah. you know you're, you're all everybody's gonna be catching largemouth or whatever but if you go somewhere like that you have to fish for smallmouth in my opinion now there's been tournaments where guys have top 10 in the st lawrence river fishing for largemouth and, and, and it's definitely happened but the odds would just be greatly against you but that doesn't mean you have to go fish for smallmouth super deep you can catch some shallow. You can catch some on top water. You can catch some doing all kinds of different stuff. But you have to fish for those the type of fish that's going to win. You know, definitely. That's all. That's it. Fish your strengths. That's it. And fish your strengths. Don't forget boat snacks. You better not.